It's Bengals week and the Chiefs are ready to make that particular franchise their little kid yet again. Call him daddy if you need to. Let's break it down. Welcome back, folks. This is RGR Football. I'm Ryan. This is me going rogue. And it is that time. We're going to talk a little bit about the Ravens today because that game went probably as good as you could ask without having your number one wide receiver on the field and having a bunch of rookies on the field instead. But we also have to look ahead to the Cincinnati Bengals. We are going to have a lot of fun. Welcome. Like, sub, hit the bell. Join us here on RGR Football where we break it down all the time for real. I'm going to have some film for you coming up later. And we are going to get to the part right now that really breaks it all down. The Chiefs faced maybe the toughest test in the NFL and came away with flying colors. Did they have to eke it out and have a toe go wrong in order to get that W? Possibly. There's a chance they could have stopped them uh, for a two-point conversion as well. But in the end, the mistakes the Chiefs made really highlighted, I think, the fact that they were ready to take on one of the better defenses in this league. And from everything else that we saw this weekend, the Chiefs are ahead of schedule. So what does that mean? Mahomes is super efficient. He's been able to distribute the ball, and I think especially without Hollywood on the field, taking the most of Rasheed Rice, of Xavier Worthy, obviously the, the electric plays really pay off, but of Travis Kelsey as well. That's what really gets the job done. Now, Isaiah Pacheco is going to grind it out as well. Hope that we have a little bit more to talk about for him next week, but we'll get to that in a little bit when we talk about the Bengals. I think the thing that really sets it apart is the fact that This team has learned early. Hollywood Brown's only going to add to that. The level of play right now and understanding where to be and how to do it is pretty good compared to most of the other seasons we've seen in the Andy Reid regime. And now you're going to get a veteran back on top of it. Now, we don't know if Hollywood's going to play as of this recording. We do know that he is possible to return to practice and therefore possible to return for the Bengals game. If they do, They will be putting him at a little bit of risk for re-injury because that's always a touchy subject. But if they don't, then you know that they're just trying to take it easy on him. Trying to be cautious, make sure that they're in it for the long run, for the long season, and get as much done as they possibly can. I think that's the way they end up leaning, but I won't be surprised either way. I hope that Hollywood is getting close to 100%. I would rather him be 100% before he goes back out there because clearly the Chiefs can run their offense and get things done without him being on the field. And I think that's true against the Bengals as well. But it comes very clear to me that this is an exemplary group of rookies on the offensive side of the ball. You saw uh, Wiley out there, split out against the Ravens, moving around a little bit, didn't get a ton of playtime, but he was out there. You saw Kingsley left on an island for the vast majority of the game, only a couple of chips to help him out. And he did pretty well. Now, was it perfect? No, never is. But I think between the drop back and what Kingsley has to do a little bit better in early in the down will help him be prepared for what's going to go on against the Bengals. Now, Hendrickson is a pretty impressive pass rusher. We'll get to him in that matchup coming up here in a bit. But here's the big part and the big play from week one against the Ravens. The one that I want to point out is not Xavier Worthy. You're going to see him come around on the end, but that's not the focus of the play. Yes, it's a heck of a run, especially for the rookie. He has very narrow lane. He's a pretty narrow guy, and he was able to exploit it, and that does help when you're trying to get downhill because gaps do become fairly narrow when you get to this portion of the field, just outside the red zone, and especially on a play like this where it's basically student body right on the way that you're running this reverse. But it's not Xavier that really makes the play. It is the upfront blocking. And Noah gives you that little motion to, to draw the attention, and the counter certainly helps. But it's at this point that you see just what the advantage is of where they've gotten to. Now we're going to flip it over and take a look at the other angle to see exactly what happens. So back here on the other angle, <clears throat> this is what we're getting. A nice little uh, either a pre-communication from Isaiah Pacheco, Or just a pretty good acting job. He's being pretty adamant here trying to get a little bit of attention on what's going on on this side of the ball. Again, drawing attention to the right-hand side of the ball pre-snap. For these linebackers, Harrison and Smith, who you will see later, as well as the right-hand side of the defensive line. 
Now, as we see him move that around, Noah goes in motion away and draws, but the attention is still put and put on the right-hand side. And the counter action that you're going to see Pacheco come with is what keys these linebackers. And they're flowing at this point. Good job by Roquan Smith of keeping his, his eyes on the backfield. So he doesn't flow. You see Harrison is taking steps into the gap to come attack Isaiah Pacheco. So is Smith. But he recovers pretty quickly. In the meantime, what you've seen, and the guy that we need to focus on is Kingsley Suavati Ia right here. Because he plays it off rather well. Comes up, he's in his stance, and he's just shuffling down the line, going the correct direction to where he eventually wants to go, but looking for a cutback lane. Basically showing the linebackers that, hey, if you're going to come flow down this way, I got you, and you're not going to be able to get to the ball carry. In the back of him, it's Trey Smith that is going to make maybe the biggest commotion in this particular play, although it is Kingsley that makes the biggest block itself. Watch Trey Smith as he comes off and he comes around. He is drawing. The inside gap gets shot and Kingsley lets him go through. And he is taking on and kicking out the edge. But look at what happens. Because of the action of the running back coming out here and the power pull to the backside, Trey Smith is pulling to nowhere. But look what it did. It drew three defenders just trying to take on his block and get to the ball carrier thinking it's going that way. Meanwhile, the right side of the offensive line has really, really just kind of let it all hang out, letting some guys through, shoving Jones. Creed Humphrey gets a nice shove on Jones and lets him attack inside, knowing that no matter how much he tries to penetrate, even if he came straight downfield, he's not going to catch Xavier Worthy. So now that leaves Roquan Smith, having paid good attention, and, and kudos to him, trying to go make a block. He turns and runs for the outside, knowing that, that he's got one, two, three, four, five guys between him and the edge. Whereas one guy, uh, defender is falling down here and the outside receiver, I think that's Juju Smith-Schuster, has another block on the come. But here is Kingsley trailing the play, understanding that he's going to be the cleanup or the cutback option. As you see, completely turned back. Joe Tooney's turning up to try to go get Roquan. Creed is hauling butt towards the sideline to try to get that outside Look, and as we come through, that's what becomes. One defender got knocked to the ground, as I said before. Now he's starting to get back up. And that does narrow the gap a little bit. But as you see Xavier make the realization that, hey, this DB has come in here. All these guys are walled off. There's a herd of linemen, including Travis, Travis Kelsey, obviously not a lineman, but Creed, Juwan, and Joe Tooney, all coming towards what is two defenders here. He just has to make sure that this guy isn't fast enough to get him so that he can take this alley. And Kingsley's going to make the big block of the day. And it's just, okay, Roquan understands he's going to cut it back in. These guys are all out of the picture. And it's just, if he slipped it well, he could even spin out of it and try to be in position if he really had to. But Kingsley's there to make the block and put him out of the picture and let Xavier into the end zone. Now, if we back it up, we want to see it in real time. Watch the pull from Kingsley Suamatia. Boom. Shuffle and, oh, I'm going to get you. Boom. And that is the, the clearing play, and he gets the celebration as well. He's going to be all right, and they're going to be able to move on. Xavier Worthy, obviously, a lot of talk about him because he just provides such a dynamic punch to the offense. If Rasheed Rice and he are on the field, Travis Kelsey's on the field, your pass game is perfectly fine. Hollywood would add to that, but it isn't a necessity. I really want to give kudos to Xavier Worthy, though, because everyone's been very concerned about his body type and his physicality. It's his mental capacity that is paying off for the Kansas City Chiefs right now. It's his determination that is paying off for the Kansas City Chiefs right now, not only to make plays, but to understand where and when those opportunities come. He made the most out of his debut in game one. I think he will double down on that for game two. But it takes a mental capacity to know where you're supposed to be in the offense. I think that's what he demonstrated week one, that he can really, really take advantage of going forward. And if that's what we can expect, they are in business. Now let's flip it because the Bengals are right around the corner. The matchup on the offensive line is certainly there. The matchup for the DBs is one that is going to have to be very, very critical as well. It's not just Trent McDuffie. It's the whole crew of corners 
and safeties that have to play that game. Will we see Jaden Hicks? I think he's kind of the X factor. I'm surprised they didn't use him in game one. I wonder if they were holding him out for game two. We will see from that. When it comes to defending Patrick Mahomes, uh, the matchup with Trey Hendrickson for Kingsley Suamatsuia, I think, is one that they'll probably chip a little bit more and give him a little bit more help. But he also has a, a significant athleticism advantage in terms of his length. That's going to be tested. And I think for the most part, he'll he'll survive. He's going to give up a player too. But I think if they can continue to, to just give him the slightest amount of help, more than they did against the Ravens, it's going to turn out pretty well. And I do feel that that is going to set them up. Now, the pass rush is a different story. Uh, Joe, over there in, uh, in Cincinnati, is hurting. He's got an injury to his throwing hand, and that's something the Chiefs have to go concentrate on. Now, I expect some overload. I expect the blitz game to, to creep up for Steve Spagnuolo, and I expect the defensive line to be better at getting penetration. This is something they have to do, and Chris Jones has to lead the way. Six pressures last week. I think he will at least hit that this week against Joe Burrow. And if you can do that without the running game that they seem to be missing Joe Mixon for, I think the Chiefs are going to be in business. This comes down to just the want-to part of the game. And this is a team the Chiefs just don't want to lose to. I think they probably went out of their way, not just to plan for the Ravens, but to plan for the Bengals as well. That's a good thing. We're going to have the game plan video later in the week for you. But it comes down really just to, to the man-on-man, mano-a-mano. Do you want to beat this team? Are you ready to be physical enough to do that? It doesn't have to be the run defense that it's been in years past without Mixon. They clearly weren't able to run very well last week. So it really is about playing more towards Spagnuolo's preference and this team's strengths in playing pass defense. So let's see how they line up. I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be a lot of fun this week. If you have thoughts, leave them down below. Make sure you like and sub and hit that bell and support our sponsors because they're supporting us and it goes an absolutely long way when you guys pitch in and give them some love as well. I hope you guys are excited. Dan has filmed for you tomorrow. All the stats you need on Thursday and we game plan it up for you on Friday. Don't miss anything this week here on RGR Football. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.